an ordinary bag that belonged to an extraordinary world leader. These are the belongings of Yasser Arafat. After 17 days of a tormenting illness in Ramallah, it went with him to the Percy Military Hospital in France, where Arafat had hoped to get better. He did not, and following an unexplained condition, Arafat died in this room on November the 11th, 2004. No autopsy was performed. Eight years later, Al Jazeera has asked scientists with the University Center for Legal Medicine in Lausanne, Switzerland, to screen the bag for any conventional toxins. They study samples of his hair, confirm it was Yasser Arafat's through DNA analysis, and screen his medicines. They find nothing. So they next consider unconventional poisons, including sophisticated radioactive material. Finding out what may have killed Yasser Arafat requires highly specialized machines, not the kind you find in hospitals. So Arafat samples were taken here to the Institute of Radiation Physics. The results are astonishing. What we have here is actually the hat he was wearing when he left uh, Ramallah. We took several samples at different locations and uh, the conclusion was that we, we, we did find some, uh, some significant polonium that was uh, present in this sample. All those samples were, um, were belongings from Mr. Arafat that were containing visible biological stains. We, we did measurements on these particular stains, which shows that there, there is an abnormal, not normal quantity of polonium. But you found unsupported polonium in these specific items? Yes, we did. Unsupported polonium, the kind made in a nuclear reactor. This highly toxic substance would not gain notoriety until 2006, when Alexander Linvenenko, a former Russian spy turned dissident, died a lingering death in the London hospital. Investigators later determined Linfinenko had been fed a lethal dose by attackers at this restaurant. An amount not visible to the eye will kill you. Studying the levels of Arafat's polonium from the samples, the Swiss make a comparison. They're able to do so because polonium levels decrease by half every 138 days. Yes, if we take the scenario of Mr. Litvinenko, one gigabacrel at the beginning would would uh, come to uh, about 10 uh, millibecquerel, and uh, what was astonishing in our case was that we, we found values in the, in the samples of Mr. Arafat that were in the same order of magnitude. To that, Professor Boshud delivers a message to Arafat's widow. If she really wants to know what's hap what happened to, to her husband, is to manage to find uh, a sample that, I mean, an exhumation from, from Mr. Arafat that would provide us with a sample that should have a very high quantity of polonium if, if, were, if he were poisoned. With the prospect of getting more samples, scientists may finally be allowed to conclude, once and for all, what killed Arafat. Clayton Swisher, Al Jazeera.